Thank you, Katie. Um, so I, I think it's sometimes people are wondering, well, how, are, how does technology apply to health? And you, you really framed out and gave us a history of the story of electricity in our lives or in the world. Um, I think it's really hard for people to understand that you can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it, and how is it affecting us? I know for me, when I first learned about this issue, I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. But now that I understand it, um, one of the things that I think is really important to communicate is how we're getting exposures not only from the devices that we use, but that other people use. Kind of like first-hand and second-hand smoke. And just like tobacco, where first the company said, oh, there's, you know, it's not addictive and there's no problem, even though there were studies showing that it caused tumors early, early on. And then, well, okay, smoking is a problem, but not secondhand smoke. Now we know that secondhand smoke has effects, especially for children. And I heard there's a law in, uh, where they're talking about smoking in cars with kids. Um, and, and now when we go places, you can't smoke inside of buildings because we know that even low levels of smoke um, can cause health effects. So likewise, when a lot of people use devices in a room and you're sitting next to someone, you're receiving some of that energy into your body, into your cells. And also, someone who maybe is a little bit further away will also get some of that signal because it's traveling to the cell tower. Um, and if you're living near a cell tower and, or a quote unquote small cell, and you haven't even, you're not even using any devices, you're getting everyone else's, all those machines that are on that are connecting to the cell tower are, are going through you, actually. Some of that is being absorbed into your body. Yes, it's, it's much less than if a phone is to your ear. But your cells feel it. And there's published studies, we have it on our, our website, I know you've talked about it in your book, that um, have found a myriad of symptoms reported by people. And also there was a, a study that was just performed out of India where they looked at people uh, close to cell antenna installations and then further away. They also did measurements in the bedroom and uh, found changes to their blood. Um, so I'm so glad that everyone's here and so interested in this really important issue that affects our health. I think it appropriate uh, that I address an exciting bit of information I received today before I speak about the subject, this incredibly important subject that, as Stephen pointed out, most people don't take nearly serious. Today, a colleague and a friend who happens to be in this room called me up early this morning and said, do you realize what happened in this wonderful country in Europe called Lithuania? And I said, no. They said they've constructed legislation, listen closely, that will be voted upon affirmatively in March that the standard of care, medicine in that country, will be lifestyle medicine. So the country of Lithuania is going to go to lifestyle plant-based medicine. So all the people listening here and around the world, let's give them a lot of So this will be a mature step in the right direction for all of humanity and a model that maybe 
countries like America who talk about our freedom will eventually give it to you. So to answer Stephen's question, uh, on the front lines, since I was a young guy in my 20s, working with some of the sickest people in the world, more than three decades ago, people would arrive, and I thought they were mentally ill. Let's be candid with you. They were saying when they went near a television, they felt nervous. So I said, well, that must be psychosis. And slowly but surely, the so-called electronic age crept up on us. And I started to see more and more of these people to such a point I could no longer write it off. I could no longer say that this ever-growing, burgeoning group of people who had different personalities from all over the world all had a mental illness. So I was forced, by default, not intelligence, to look into this. And around the same time, my depth of knowledge in quantum physics became much greater. And you had an illustrious way to introduce this, and you said it too. You gave us the history of how we've adopted electric into our lives. And I said, wow, maybe these devices that we're sticking on our head and putting on our lap, called laptop computers, on our genitalia, and the towers, as from the great documentary I saw outside of your apartment in New York, when you're close to that causes more cancer. Not maybe, not possibly, but definitely. Then I met really odd people in my life, professors that were talking about electromagnetic pollution. And they taught me a term that has come to fruition, sadly, called universal conductors. People who are hypersensitive to this. And I thought, well, they're an enigma. We're all sensitive to this. They're just hypersensitive to this. They feel it. They are the canary in the cold mind. And there's more of those canaries. They have a flock of these canaries now. And so as I studied it, and as I watched it, and as I worked more and more with these people and got empathy, sympathy, and a little bit of knowledge to learn how to help them, to ground them, I recognized that this is a new disease. It's in the third category. As we sit here and speak in the real truth about health, we're holding a major medical conference. One of my friends and colleagues from Europe is there now, Dr. Rao, from Peristaltic Clinic. And he, like us, understand lifestyle consequence. And he surprised us the other day because he told us something we didn't even know. He said, and when we talk about the big bad diseases, we talk about cancer, we talk about cardiovascular disease, he said, you know, there's a number three indecisive category of things doctors don't know what they are, they don't know how to treat them, so they either call them autoimmune diseases, and he said, let's call this category three that, by the way, supersedes heart disease and cancer. And that category three, what we're speaking about tonight, is clearly one of the factors implicated in why people are sick today. No question. So my wife, who's Swedish, got a hold of the gentleman you spoke about articulately today, Dr. Hardell, who has been harping for 35, 40 years on the cell industry about protecting consumers from that, to no avail. Dr. Davis, who you work with, is a colleague who basically, by default, she wasn't interested in cell phones, but when, during the Clinton administration, they chose to do a multi-million dollar study to see if American citizens would get brain tumors from cell phones, and it was fudged, an ethical Dr. Davis defudged it. She, as a good human being, basically stood up and said, I've got to teach people how damaging and dangerous this is. And probably one of the best lectures I've ever seen, she's not here with us, is on YouTube now at the University of Sydney by Dr. Davis. You may want to look at that, those of you here in the room and listening. Melbourne. So this is an 
ever-growing catastrophic concern that's going to amplify by 100 times. Now, is the Irish Brian embellishing this? I'm giving you a factual statement. So when I speak to the physicists and the electronic engineers, the doctors of electronics, 5G will amplify 4G, which was horrible to begin with, that much more. And you're going to have more of these towers closer and closer and closer to you. So all I can say to you, you can eat like I'm telling you to eat. You can exercise like I'm suggesting. You can have the greatest attitude in the world. And you're going to be sick if we allow this to continue. And if you don't protect yourself, and we'll get to those issues later.